Shalom and blessings, warriors of Yahuwah and the truth. Um, I'm going to continue on with lesson number 11 from The Lie, Remember? The truth will set you free. Um, we are starting with Pillar of Fire, Burning Bush, and Shape Shifting. And um, during my... Um, during my uh, my meeting last night, um, we did a study on the lost books, and um, uh, we started getting into a conversation about shapeshifters because the the books were talking about dragons and um, some other creatures that were um, in existence before. And I do believe that these creatures were in existence at some point in time because some people post videos of seeing fairies and seeing uh, other creatures. So I, I believe in that completely. Okay, so. There exists an unverified account of Pilat about Yahusha in his second letter to Kaiser. The transliterations in parentheses are loose modifications to the translated letter from Pilat. Um, Pontius Pilat to Tiberius Kaiser, the emperor, greeting <clears throat> concerning Yahusha Hamashiach, which is in parentheses, whose case I had clearly set forth to you in my last letter in parentheses. At, at length, by the will of the people, a bitter punishment has been inflicted, myself being in a sort unwilling and rather afraid, a man by, by Hercules, so pious and strict, no age has ever had nor had nor will have but wonderful were the efforts of the people themselves and the unanimity of all the scribes and chief men and elders to stake this ambassador of truth not with notwithstanding that their own prophets and after and after our manner the, the sibyls warned them against it and supernatural signs appeared while he was hanging and in the opinion of philosophers threat and destruction to the whole world. His disciples are flourishing in their work and the regulation of their lives not belying their master, yea, in his name most beneficent. Had I not been afraid of the rising of a sedition among the people who were just on the point of breaking out, perhaps this man would still have been alive to us. Although urged more by fidelity to thy dignity than induced by my own wishes, I did not, according to my strength, resist that innocent blood free from the whole charge brought against it, but unjustly, through the, the malignity of men, should be sold and suffer, yet as the scriptures signify to their own destruction. Farewell, 28th of March. Pilate's first letter is most interesting and remarkable. He described Yahusha as having the ability to alter his appearance, even appear as a completely different person as several people would look upon him at the same time. The one, to one person, he would appear aged, rugged, and tanned, and to another, as a young, pale, smooth-skinned lad. This miracle allowed him to pass through their midst undetected. Although scoffed at today by modern sophists as fantasy, Pilate's letters speak to the veracity of Yahushua's existence and abilities. There's really no way to tell if this letter to Kaiser is real, but if it is, it would it would have been sent to Rome, passed around over through the century over through the centuries, and may be somewhere in the original Latin among the secret files in the Vatican archives. It's probably more difficult to see than the menorah, the, the menorah Titus and Vespian or Vespasian, took from Jerusalem in 70 CE. The thing is, Yahushua would have had no problem shape-shifting at all, even to appear differently to multiple people at the same moment, in an instant. The idea of someone making up such a story as this from that time period would be highly improbable. The backstory of why Yehuda or, or Judas Arranged to betray Yahusha with a kiss makes more sense if we understand how Yahusha would disguise his appearance. A manuscript discovered in Egypt in the Coptic language is the source of the information, and discussed in a book by Roloff van, van den Broek, Emeritus 
professor of the history of Christianity at Utrecht University in the Netherlands. The author reveals how the manuscript tells how Yahusha was arrested late on the third night of that week on what is now called Tuesday, and not on the night the circus has been teaching, the fifth night of the week, Thor's Day. The professor's book is confirming what many people now know to be true. In the commonly accepted B-I-B-L-E story, or Besora story, it is claimed that the Apostle Judas agrees to betray Yahusha in exchange for cash, then kisses him to reveal his identity. The newly deciphered text explains that far from a sign of affection or guilt, the kiss was Judas's way of forestalling any shape-shifting confusion. The Jews said to Judas, How shall we arrest him? For he does not have a single shape, but his appearance changes. Sometimes he is ruddy, sometimes he is white, sometimes he is red, sometimes he is wheat-colored, sometimes he is pallid, like ascetics. Sometimes he is, he is a youth, sometimes an old man, it reads. For a man who could walk on water, raise the dead, feed 5,000 people with just a single loaf of bread and a fish, and turn water into wine, such abilities are perhaps unsurprising. But shapeshifting is not the only superpower the ancient manuscript attributes to J-E-S-U-S or Yahusha, this author's correction. <clears throat> It also says that he could even turn himself invisible. It claims that on the night before his crucifixion, J-E-S-U-S or Yahusha ate dinner with Pontius Pilate, the Roman prefect who decided his sentence, who it is said remarkably offered his son to be crucified in place of the Messiah, J-E-S-U-S or Yahusha, declined the offer, explaining that if he could escape from his fate, if he wanted, he couldn't escape from his fate if he wanted to. <clears throat> the text says Pilate then looked at J.E.S.U.S. and behold, he became incorporeal. He did not see him for a long time. Later that night, according to the manuscript, Pilate and his wife dreamed of an eagle representing J.E.S.U.S. being killed. The incredible text, which is thought to be some 1,200 years old, is written in the same or in the name of Saint. Cyril, uh, or Cyril of Jerusalem, <clears throat> although Professor Van den Broek says it was probably written by someone else. <clears throat> Back then it was looked after by monks at the monastery of St. Michael in the desert of northwest Egypt, south of Cairo. The text was rediscovered in 1910, and the following year it was, brought, it was bought along with other manuscripts by the wealthy Wall Street financier J.P. Morgan. <clears throat> That's a familiar name. Morgan's collections were later given to the public, and they are now kept in the Morgan Library and Museum in New York City. <clears throat> and um, since I said I was going to shorten my videos so that you guys can get um, the entirety of the lessons, um, I'm going to end here. And lesson number 12, I'm going to read Genocide in Plain View, um, Catechetical Method of Teaching, and identifying the old and renewed covenants correctly. And what does Yahuwah love? And is Yahuwah's love conditional? And I think I will go as far as confusion over the name. Because those all seem to go together perfectly. I love you all. And um, I hope you guys enjoyed this lesson. Baruch Haba. I love you all with an everlasting love.